The meeting will please come to order. Hello everyone, I am Trippy Congo, President of Wilmington City Council. Today is Thursday, December the 2nd. Just want to thank everyone who has joined us in council chambers as well as those who are with us virtually. And just as a friendly reminder for public comment, there is a Google Form sign-up link in the chat for anyone who would like to speak. Public comment will take place after non-legislative business. We're going to begin with having our opening prayer by Akira Granado. Heavenly Father, we have assembled to handle the affairs of our city. As we do so, we ask for your guidance and understanding. We pray that our city reaches a place of peace and safety. Keep us out of harm's way and bless those who are in authority. Let respect be key in all our endeavors. Amen. Amen. This time we will have our Pledge of Allegiance. For which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. This time, clerk, please call for the roll. Council Member Gray. Present. Council Member Darby. Present. Council Member Oliver. Present. Council Member Harley. Present. Council Member Fields. Present. Council Member McCoy. Here. Councilman Johnson. Here. Councilman Field. Present. Councilwoman Cabrera. Present. Councilwoman Dixon. Present. Councilman Spadola. Present. Councilwoman Walsh. Councilwoman Walsh. And President Congo. Here. 12 present and one absent. Thank you. This time we'll have the reading of the minutes from the previous meeting. November 18, 2021, City Council met on regular session with remote participation on the above date at 6.30 p.m. President Ernest M. Congo II presiding. The opening prayer was done by Kira Granardo, Deputy City Clerk. The Pledge of Allegiance was recited by City Council. I move the minutes be accepted as written. Second. It's been properly moved and second that the minutes be accepted as written on the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. This time we'll have our committee reports. November 15, 2021, present members of Council City of Wilmington, ladies and gentlemen, we, your Public Works and Transportation Committee, by virtual meeting with anchor location to whom was referred ordinance number 21052 entitled, an ordinance to amend chapter 42 of the city code to adopt a new underground facilities coordination manual. I've given this ordinance careful study and recommend council vote on it accordingly. Respectfully submitted, those members present, Councilwoman Oliver, Councilwoman Gray, Councilman Field, Councilwoman Fields, Councilman Spadola, President Congo, absent with leave, Councilwoman Walsh. I move that the committee report be received, recorded, and filed. Second. It's been properly moved that the committee report be received, recorded, and filed on the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. November 15, 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, we are your Public Works and Transportation Committee by virtual meeting with anchor location to who was referred ordinance number 21053 entitled in order to enact certain traffic and parking regulations. I have given this ordinance careful study and recommend council vote on it accordingly. Respectfully submitted, those members present, Councilwoman Oliver, Councilwoman Gray, Councilman Field, Councilwoman Fields, Councilman Spadola, President Congo, absent with leave, Councilwoman Walsh. I'll move the committee report we'll be, be received. Report. Second. It's been probably moved and second that the committee report be received, recorded, and filed on the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion carried. This time we'll have our city treasurer's report. December 2nd, 2021. Total investment, $504,689,182.39. Total cash on hand, 11 
million eight hundred forty six thousand fifty nine dollars and eighty six cents grand total five hundred sixteen million five hundred thirty five thousand two hundred forty two dollars and twenty five cents submitted by Dwayne Sims city treasurer I move the treasurer's report be received recorded and filed second it's been properly moved and second that the treasurer's report be received recorded and filed on the question all in favor signify by saying aye aye any opposed aye Motion carried. This time I'll accept the motion to accept all non legislative business. So moved. Second. second. It's been properly moved. It's been properly moved and second to accept all non legislative business on the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. I believe that we have uh, two recognitions this evening. Uh, Councilwoman Cabrera. Thank you, Mr. President. It's been a while since I've been up here. <laughs> this evening is a very special evening because we are recognizing one of Wilmington's first. I would like to invite the family of Ismael Prado to please come to the front as we recognize your father, our first Hispanic firefighter. We recently lost Ismael, as we finally called him Ish, on August 6th to a battle to cancer. As the family comes up, I do want to tell you how I met Ish for the first time. It's when a committee of Hispanic leaders came together and they formed the Latinos for SILS. And they were uh, working very diligently to organize in the Hispanic community to bring out the vote for, at that time, Dr. James H. Sills, Jr., who then became our first African-American mayor. So that's how I encounter Ish, working in that committee, becoming part of that movement. Uh, so history was made. And uh, tonight, we recognize those that trailblaze and go before us. For there was a time when all of us and people of color were not in these institutions. Uh, we're not part of government, we're not part of leadership, so we cannot forget those that came before us. And Ish did trailblaze in the fire department, as did Chico Rodriguez and Nick Rodriguez and Burgos as the first Hispanic firefighters. And that opened the door for us to have made history with our first deputy fire chief and battalion chiefs and all those that hold leaderships in this institution as we just wrapped up a 100 years celebration of uh, our Wilmington Fire Department. So I will now um, read the resolution and then have the family say a few words about your husband and your father. Uh, Ish had five, five daughters, right? Five or four? Oh, you know why I say five? Because that's the other thing. Everybody thought Anita and I were such lookalikes back in the day, and they always thought that I was Ish's daughter. So I accepted, and he did adopt me. So they, these are my sisters up here. <laughs> Whereas, and this is sponsored by all of Wilmington City Council. Whereas Wilmington City Council would like to posthumously shine the light on Mr. Ismael Prado, who dedicated his life and service to his community and the city of Wilmington. And whereas Ish, or Sonny, as he was affectionately called, was born in Naguabo, Puerto Rico, and moved with his family to Wilmington, Delaware in 1954. After graduating from Wilmington High School, Ish accepted a position with the city of Wilmington's Department of License and Inspections. In 1967, Ish was accepted into the Wilmington Fire Academy rookie class and began his career with the Wilmington Fire Department. He was honored and very proud to be the first Hispanic firefighter in the city of Wilmington. During his 28-year career, Ish rose to the rank of lieutenant and encouraged other people of color to pursue careers as a firefighter. And whereas in 1968, he married the love of his life Narcisa Maria Lopez, known to us as Sita. He gave him four beautiful daughters. Mr. Prada was very involved and committed to his community. He gave his time and unwavering desire to the betterment of his community. He served as president of the board for the Latin American Community Center, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Delaware, and Unidos Sin Fronteras. Ish was also a member of the board for the Latin American Community Center Development Corporation. Latinos for Life, and Delaware Right to Life. He was a founding member of the Wilmington United Neighborhood and very proud member of the Knights of Columbus 
San Pablo Council number 11384, where he held many positions. Ish loved the game of baseball, especially his beloved Philadelphia Phillies. It was his love for baseball and for his community which led him to start the Ish Prado Midget Baseball League on Wilmington's west side. Ish was politically active and engaged in local elections. He helped elect Wilmington's first African-American mayor, James H. Sills Jr., as part of the Latinos for Sills. And whereas a devout Christian, Ish was a very active member of St. Paul's Church in Wilmington. He served many years on the parish council and volunteered for many church activities. He served as a lector and Eucharistic minister and member of the Juan 23rd movement. Ish was an extraordinary minister to the sick and a dedicated CCD teacher. He even worked as a school crossing guard after his retirement. Ish's guiding principle, be the voice, always advocate for those who do not have a voice. So now therefore, be it resolved by the council of the city of Wilmington that this council posthumously recognizes Ismael Ish Sunny Prado for his extraordinary career in service to the city of Wilmington and his dedication and passion for his community. And please watch your step. Thank you. Thank you for this acknowledgement on behalf of my mother, my sister, our family, and our friends. Uh, we just want to express our gratitude to the city of Wilmington, which was the city that dad loved so much. Uh, he advocated for those who didn't have a voice and worked tirelessly to make the city of Wilmington a better place. So thank you for this recognition and may God bless you all. Councilmember McCoy. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to the family for sharing your father with the city of Wilmington. We truly appreciate all the service that he provided. I would also like to uh, just give our appreciation uh, for your father's dedication to our to our city and to our community he has a uh, a heck of a, re a resume mm -hmm. and i'm sure that didn't even capture the entirety of what he did for you all and did for our city so again just thank you so much and thank you thank you for joining us councilwoman fields yes i'll be um have a recognition um recognition for frank's food market and Frank's Deli. Mr. Frank, is he here? I believe he's here. Good evening, everyone. The sponsors are Council Member Loretta Walsh. Brigitte Fields and Christopher C. Johnson. Whereas it is the sense of city council to honor individuals who have demonstrated outstanding achievement and are deserving of recognition and acknowledgement, Song Ju Ye is such an individual who made significant contributions to the Hilltop community. And whereas Song Gu Ye, known as Frank to almost everyone in town, has owned Frank's Deli and groceries since 2007. When he took over the already existing Frank's food market, Frank has a unique and inspiring life story to share from growing up in South Korea, moving to Venezuela for 20 years, and his newfound home, the Hilltop neighborhood in Wilmington. And whereas Frank overcame adversity in many situations throughout his life, all of which have inspired him to become the great man and father that he is today, he and his wife, Anna, of 32 years, worked long hours at a grocery store before taking over Frank's Deli. Being the dedicated family man, he was determined to create a better life for his family. In doing so, he opened Frank's Food Market, which became essential in Hilltop community. 
For the past 14 years, he has developed a reputation of being the gentle, well-respected man who can often be crossing, seen, often seen crossing 4th Street to cater to both Frank's Deli and groceries and Frank's Food Market. And whereas Frank is a man full of life experience, culture exposure, and a wealth of knowledge, he gets to share these characteristics with those who work with him and all of those who frequent his stores. All year round, Wilmington residents rave of the amazing seafood platters that are prepared at Frank's and have the unofficial title of the best crabs in Wilmington. <laughs> and whereas being looked at as an outsider did not stop Frank from serving, he found his place within our great city and he committed to creating a safe space for his employees and those he serves. Although Frank is not Although Frank is not his birth name, he considers it as a badge of honor and is a and it is a reminder of how far he has come. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the Council of the City of Wilmington that this council is pleased to commend Song Ju Ye, known as Frank, for the outstanding commitment and dedication that he provides to the local community. Thank you. And I just want to say, everybody, go, I don't know about everybody, but I know quite a few people always go to Frank's to get a platter. You can see the line sometimes, especially during the summertime. So thanks again for just being such a pillar in the community. Do you have a few words? Please, please watch your step as you're step, coming up to the podium. Uh, good night. Thank you for uh, inviting me in this uh, place. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is to me very surprised because I never feel enough did to receive this kind of um, reward uh, that I dedicate uh, for my family to me and then <clears throat> for my store. I all time tried that I can do. When I started, I was very low condition, economy, everything. So every day when I am in my store, I pride, okay, God help me. I'm gonna try best I can do. I'm gonna give a uh, bad product, a bad service, so help me please. And then right now, uh, my economic condition is established. And then I started from Wilmington, and then I have planned to, you know, go um, another place too. So uh, what I wanted to say right here is um, right now I feel I owe too much to uh, this country and then this state because, you know, <clears throat> I lived a long time in Latin America. Uh, I tried, I did everything, but is different in USA. Really, I feel the very big country, and then I'm uh, Asian. And then when I started, you know, I didn't understand a lot of uh, people because you know different culture. But uh, after the travel, right now uh, I'm part of this community. So if I have some mistake, everything, please tell me, and then you know. Uh, advice. I all time uh, open to receive that kind of advice. And uh, from now, <clears throat> I will try uh, if I can, if God give me power, I want to make, I want to try make better my job and then uh, make a little better Wilmington community and uh, Delaware and in USA. So if county need anything from me, I, I don't have too much power, but uh, I can be here a little part of that. So please don't hate me about that. And then <laughs> thank you for Wilmington. Thank you for all community. And then thank you very much. Have a nice night. Councilwoman Cabrera. Yes, yeah, so I just want to 
say congratulations, Mr. Frank, because being a business owner and being in that kind of environment, it's not easy. And you do provide a service in our city, and we should recognize the small businesses that are really the heart and soul of the city of Wilmington, people like yourself that have come here. I think about the first bodegas when they, you know, when Victor and those people opened up, and you guys are such a part of our fabric of, of our community, and you bring flavor and you bring culture and something different. I'm sure that the reason that that seafood is so good is because there's got to be some kind of a little Asian twist in there. So I just want to say congratulations, keep up the good work, and we really appreciate it. Your words here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councilman Johnson. Uh, again, uh, congratulations, Frank. I think it was uh, a long time coming that the whole state, you know, uh, started to recognize the work that you do. And you are exactly what we're trying to build um, in, in Wilmington, especially the west side. You know, we have a lot of eclectic um, eateries in that area. Um, you know, Asian, Dominican, Puerto Rican, Mexican. Really Councilman Johnson, if you can turn your mic on, please. Oh. I think you turned it on then accidentally turned it back off. Yeah, I'm sorry. Mm. always on. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, All right. So I don't know how much everyone heard, but again, <laughs> I like to thank Frank and, and it's, we're, we're working on, especially with the Economic Development Office, to support those small businesses on the west side and. Again, um, we want to continue to make it a destination where you can get all kind of flavors of the world right here in Wilmington. So thank you so much, Frank. Councilwoman Harley. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. I want to say uh, congratulations to uh, Mr. Frank. Um, I read a very impressive article in the paper about him and his business and his, um, I want to say his trials and his triumph. Um, as it related to him coming to um, Wilmington, um, getting his business started as he shared tonight. Um, I didn't know when I seen the name on the agenda tonight, I didn't know that it was him. But um, as I listened uh, to what he was saying tonight, I recall reading the article and it was very, very impressive. And what was so impressive to me was his perseverance. And so again, I just wanna say congratulations. And I do wanna add one personal um, touch to this. Uh, about two years ago, I was trying to figure out who had the best crab legs and um, crab boil with the broccoli and potatoes and the crab legs and all that. And when they told me um, Frank's over on Delmore Place, I think it is, and so when I got there, I was completely shocked and surprised because I don't know, for some reason, I just wasn't expecting it to be um, uh, Asian, I think, Asian, um, uh, a, a store, you know, that was making that really delicious um, seafood. So anyway, it was very good for those that haven't tried it, if he's still um, serving it, um, it's delicious. And again, I just wanted to say congratulations and thanks for persevering and thanks for um, staying in Wilmington. Thank you, Mr. President. And thank you. All right. I thank you, Councilwoman Fields, and thank you, Mr. Frank. This time we are going to move to our public comment. We have three people who are in council chambers who sign up for public comment, as well as one on virtual community member that will be allowed to go after those who have spoken in, in council chambers to, to give her comments. Just as a uh, quick reminder, you do have about a three minute time frame to give your comments. Please, if you're going to address anyone on council, please only address um, me. Um, and when it, when it gets to about 30 seconds left, we will give you a friendly reminder. First we have Deacon Earl Tate. Greetings. Greetings. Greetings, folks. I would like to say, uh, how was your Thanksgiving? Was it nice? I hope it was. But, but what, I, what I would like to say to y'all is there was a house that caught on fire 
Uh, the address is 210 uh, East 25th Street. Now, now, like, now, like, now, like the, the the garbage men came around there and got some of the bags up, but there, but but there's still uh, there's still plenty plenty of trash and everything laid out there, laid out there that that is blocking the sidewalks, and 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 and, and it makes the place look 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 kind of down, look kind of down like, so like uh, so like we 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 wanted y'all to know about that because uh, uh because uh we would like to have it cleaned all up cleaned all up and 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 start on and start on fixing that neighborhood up right but but that's a, that's just one of the things one of the things that that uh that the people that the people uh, of the neighborhood say but i i talked to many of them and, and they say, and they say they would like y'all, like y'all to put this, put this on 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 your bills, on your bills to be to be passed for for the high speed bumps brought here, brought in the city because these people nowadays are driving, are driving, driving so fast they drive, they drive like there's no tomorrow, they, uh, and, and, and they don't care, and they don't care about about nobody, nobody, not even themselves. Not even itself. We, I, I, unless you, unless you've been in an accident, like I have, been hit, knocked down, and dragged 30 feet or more on Third Street Bridge when I was at the age of five, you, you know, I, uh, you know what I mean. But, but it's time, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's time for us to, time for us to slow down, slow down these drivers in the city, in the city, and, and, and to make. And to make the city much more, much more better, like it used to be, just like, uh, 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 just like, just like this place down there, uh, two, two o one Vanderbilt Avenue. Uh, I, uh, that's a nice place to have a recreation area for the kids, for the kids, because when we was coming up, they had, they had, they had a lot of after school recreation, a lot of community centers. And everything and everything for 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 the kids to play it for the for the kids to do their homework at and everything. But this is that that's a nice place and I and, and the city owns it. So so like so like so like it would be a nice place for the for the put uh, for the put activity in it for the kids for the kids and the and, and the adults go in there too to, to, to have fun with the kids. All right. But, 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 but this is, I, 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 these are, these are things that, things that the neighborhood and all been, been talking about. And have, a, have a nice weekend. All right, thank you, Deacon Tate. What was that address again? Huh? What was that address for the fire was? You said there was some trash out front. Uh, the, the, the address is 210, 210. 210 East, East 25th Street. Okay, all right, thank you. Next, we have Brandon Fletcher. Okay, <clears throat> so I came here today just to talk about the recent shootings that have been occurring across the city of Wilmington. Um, and the need to invest in community-led solutions to these issues. Um, the city of Wilmington can follow the suit of other states and cities of the same size, like Camden, New Jersey, that piloted specific programs where they had community police officers. Essentially, they did a focus on a small block area within a community, and they saw gun violence go down. If we are actually talking to police precincts and police commanders, and folks on the force who are interested in, who are from the communities and are interested in actually addressing the issues in the community and not just ramming themselves into a middle of a neighborhood without any real relationships with those community members, can you please look to those solutions to keep people safe? Community safety is community-led. 
but community safety also includes and is created by access to quality education, access to quality health care, and culturally competent health care that is actually saving people and not killing them. It's access to economic opportunities, good jobs with good wages, union paying jobs. It's access to safe and secure and affordable housing. All of those things are what keep our communities safe. Community safety is community led, but community safety also includes and is created by access to all of these opportunities. Police don't keep us safe. If we think about when police actually enter our communities, it's after incidents have already occurred, after the gun is already shot. We are who keep our community safe. We have always kept our community safe, but when we don't have access to education and to secure and safe housing and to all of the resources that we need to involve the youth in opportunities that keep them away from the streets, that our community becomes unsafe. And so I also want to talk about the, the funding aspect of this, because Wilmington Police Department received $1.4 million recently in grants. And so what I suggest is stop putting money into a police department that has proven not to respond and address crime and put those money into communities to ensure we have access to all of the social services, all of the programming, all of the I, resources we I, need in order to keep our communities safe. Thank you. And I just, please do something. People are dying every day in this city. I recently just had a friend who lost his life in Hilltop. And I don't want it to happen anymore. Invest in community, invest in people. Thank you. Thank you. And our final speaker will be Kobe Owens. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kobe Owens. I only have three minutes, 180 seconds forced upon me. Do not choose it, but I know I must use it. I'm deeply saddened that our city has broken a grim milestone when it comes to gun violence, and we still have 29 days left in 2021. It's been over 110 different incidents so far this year, but I'm up here because this is more than a statistic. Each homicide represents a life cut short traumatized family, friends, and community members, residents who feel trapped and threatened in their neighborhoods, overwhelmed by relentless gun violence. This number represents children and youth who don't feel safe traveling to and from school, business owners who don't feel safe operating, and first responders who internalize the pain of losing lives again and again on our streets here in Wilmington, and people looking to leave the city at the first opportunity that they have. In short, we are in the middle of a gun crisis. The public deserves to, deserves to know what our city is doing to address gun violence that is gripping our neighborhoods. To truly be effective, this includes a bigger and more comprehensive strategy that includes a more robust investment in prevention, intervention, and crime services, victim services that has been proven to work and connects the appropriate strategies. This is a difficult issue. Cities around the country are struggling to find solutions, but Wilmingtonians have to be able to see that our leadership is coming together, coming around the table to do everything they possibly can to address this crisis that we're facing every single day. We need a detailed steps and that our city could take that sees a, a greater speed and transparency on implementation of gun violence prevention initiatives, enhanced coordination among relevant city, county, and state agencies, and leveraging our resources with, our, with Wilmington's dynamic business community in order to treat this crisis with the urgency it deserves. Invest more into tackling it as a public health perspective. It's time for us to finally put all our differences aside and stop the violence in our city. This is out of control right now. That's it. All right, thank you, Kobe.
At this time, we are going to move to legislative business. Council Member Gray. Nothing this evening, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Member Darby. Nothing this evening. President, can I hear you? That was for public comment, WITN? Yes. Do you, do you know who it is? Angela Okay, yeah, she, um, she's not going to give public comment. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Council Member uh, Oliver. Good evening, Mr. President. Um, I do have some legislation tonight, uh, starting with uh, Mr. President. I would like to hold ordinance number 21048, agenda 0097 at this time. Mr. President, uh, I would like to move a motion. I would like to make a motion um, to place this on January the 20, 20, uh, 2022 council agenda. Second. second. There's been motion and second to um, to place to to hold this ordinance and place it on is it January 22nd. The 20th. 2000. January 20th council meeting. And take a roll call vote. Uh, Councilwoman Darby. Councilwoman Gray. Yes. Councilwoman. Yes. Darby. Yes. Councilmember Oliver. Yes. Councilmember Harley. Yes. Councilmember McCoy. Yes. Councilmember Fields. Yes. Councilmember Johnson. Yes. Councilmember Field. Yes. Councilmember Cabrera. Yes. Councilmember Dixon. Yes. Councilmember Spadola. Yes. Councilmember Walsh, isn't it? C Councilmember Walsh. Can I also vote yes? Oops, I'm sorry, I took your job, didn't I? That's okay. I just, I'm sorry. Yeah. I just realized that. <laughs> <laughs> do we need to? Um, very well. Do we, do, we, do we need to? Um, do you need to do that? No, I think no? I'm just doing okay. a voice vote. Oh, okay. That's okay. All right. <laughs> just sorry for the record, that. it was a roll call vote on the motion to place it on the January 20th, 2022 agenda. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. It was 12, 12 yeas and one absent. That's correct, sir. All right. <laughs> All right thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Councilwoman Oliver. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, I uh, have a final reading for uh, ordinance um, uh, to present and call for the third and final. Ordinance uh, 21052. Ordinance 21052, agenda 0106, an ordinance to amend chapter 42 of the city code to adopt a new underground facilities coordination manual. Mr. President, I move this be known um, as an enacting clause of the ordinance and call for a yay, nay vote. Second. It's been properly moved and second that that be known as the enacting clause of the ordinance and called for a yay, nay vote on the question. Um, Mr. President, this ordinance is being presented by the administration for council to review the approval of the ordinance amends section 42-722 of the city code to adopt a new underground facility coordination manual. Seeing no hands raised virtually or in chambers, clerk, please call for the roll. Thank you. Councilwoman Gray? Yes. Councilwoman Darby? Yes. Councilwoman Oliver? Yes. Councilwoman Harley? Yes. Councilwoman Fields? Yes. Councilwoman McCoy? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yes. Councilman Field? Yes. Councilwoman Cabrera? 
Yes. Councilwoman Dixon? Yes. Councilman Spadola? Yes. And President Congo? Yes. 12 yeas and one absent. Declared adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. I have an ordinance to present a call for the third and final reading, uh, Ordinance 21052. Or 53, I'm sorry. Sure, no problem. Ordinance 21053, Agenda 0107, in ordinance to enact certain traffic and parking regulation. Mr. President, I have a substitute to present in lieu of the ordinance after, okay. Substitute number one to ordinance number 21053, revision one to agenda 0107, in ordinance to enact certain traffic and parking regulations. I move this be known as the enacting clause of the substitute ordinance and call for yay may vote. Second, I come. It's been properly moved and seconded that, that be known as the enacting clause of the substitute ordinance and called for a yay nay vote. On the question. Yes, Mr. President, this substitute ordinance is being presented by the administration for council's review and approval. This, this substitute ordinance approves various traffic and parking regulations in the city. And seeing no hands raised, clerk, please call for the roll. Councilwoman Gray? Yes. Councilwoman Darby? Yes. Councilwoman Oliver? Yes. Councilwoman Harley? Yes. Councilwoman Fields? Yes. Councilwoman McCoy? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yes. Councilman Field? Yes. Councilwoman Cabrera? Yes. Councilwoman Dixon? Yes. Councilman Spadola? Yes. And President Congo? Yes. 12 yeas and one absent. Declared adopted. Any other legislation, Councilwoman Oliver? No, thank you. Uh, no more on this evening, Mr. President. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Council Member Harley? No legislation tonight, Mr. President. Thank you. Council Member Fields? No legislation tonight, Mr. President. Thank you. Council Member McCoy? Nothing tonight, Mr. President. Thank you. Council Member Johnson? No items tonight, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Field? Nothing tonight, Mr. President. Thank you. Council Member Cabrera? Nothing this evening, sir. Thank you. Council Member Dixon? Nothing tonight, Mr. President. Thank you. And Council Member Spadola. Nothing tonight, Council President. All right. Thank you. At this time, we will move to petitions and communications. Councilwoman Gray. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to say that last night we had an intergovernmental committee meeting, and we found out a lot of new information that will really help the victims of Ida. Um, one thing is that as a resident, as a homeowner, and even as a renter, you may apply for a 1.5% loan, very low loan. And I think you do not even have to start paying it back for 18 months, but any, any um, possessions that were damaged or lost, you can apply for this loan, but you have to do it by December 17th. And if possible, um, please watch the video, which is on uh, city council's website for the intergovernmental meeting of last evening, because all the information is on there. There's also going to be a meeting at the warehouse to give more information to help those victims of Ida. So um, to get more of this, I don't have it in front of me. I just thought of it. Um, please call city council office and someone will be able to give you the specifics or go to the meeting at warehouse. I think one of my other committee members, I saw her looking up like she has the information, um, Councilwoman Harley. But if not, um, call our office. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Council Member Darby? No, nothing tonight, President. Thank you. Council Member Oliver? Yes, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to um, thank uh, Councilwoman Gray for um, that presentation for the lady who came last night. That was very helpful information for, um, for the SBA information in general. Um, thank you for that. But I would like to, um, I'm, I'm going to change my comments. I'd like to thank Kobe and Brandon for coming in tonight, talking about to speak in regard to this gun violence. I mean, um, it is at an all time high in the city of Wilmington. We have exceeded our numbers from what they were last year. I don't know if it's 38 or 36 over 
whatever it is, we have exceeded the gun violence in the city of Wilmington. And I too agree that we should be saying more about the gun violence in the city of Wilmington. Um, I have to admit that it is a, a lot of black on black crime here. I, I understand that, but my, that's not my point. My point is I would like to hear more from the chief of police to hear about a plan in the city of Wilmington about certain areas um, that are hot spots, especially the east side and north area, northeast area that I represent. And I keep asking for help and keep asking for help. And, um, you know, um, once you don't hear about a shoot and it dies down, but if we have a plan that a particular council member that has a high rate of homicides in their districts which is the third, which is the sixth, which is um, the fifth, um, and I know we have some in the second. We need to know what's going on with the police, with the plan, and uh, regarding police, regarding shooting. The holidays are coming. It's only going to get worse. I'm not blaming the police for doing the shooting, but I would just like to hear more of a plan of action that's taking place in the streets of Wilmington. Um, I don't think it's a lot of shooting in the seventh and the eighth. I'm not, I don't know because I'm not over there like that. But if it's a, not a lot of shooting in the seventh and eighth, I'm not saying they don't need police presence over there, but maybe not as much during the evening. That east side is a mess. You ride past there when you leave this meeting over on Pine Street, over on Bennett Street, over on Kirkwood Street. Any given time of the night, you will see 20 to 30, I mean, or even more. And it's really sad that Ministry of Karen, Brother Ron, all the money he has put into Ministry of Karen is actually talking about moving the residents out of there. And that's the senior residency. And he's built millions of dollars to assist on that east side. And I don't feel as though they're getting the help that them seniors need over there. Them seniors are leaving there, and it's really sad. So I totally agree with Kobe and Brandon and a lot of my members, the city councils, I'm not excluding, which y'all don't know, we have been asking for help also. So city council members are asking for the same thing that the public is asking for, more attention, more awareness towards some of this gun violence. Enough is enough. Tell us what's going on. What is your plan? Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Harley. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I must say that Council uh, Member Oliver, I think she basically said it all um, as it relates to um, the, the crime and the violence that's going on um, as it related to uh, the two gentlemen that spoke on it tonight. I think the only thing that I would just like to echo is that we have been trying to communicate and I have been trying to understand what's, what's the plan. Um, and we realized that even with the holidays, typically um, things typically do get worse. So I'm just hoping that um, as it relates to getting more information and communicating um, with city council in terms of a plan that we definitely will be getting one soon because we, we talk about it all the time. And I think the community needs to know that yes, even though we vote um, on grants to get more money to continue to help um, with our public safety, which I still agree is the right thing to do, please don't think that we're not having the conversation about how we can improve pu public safety as it relates to our crime. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman Fields. Yes, um, thank you, Council President. I just have, um, I'm going to um, say thank you to my colleagues. Um, we did, we have been discussing it. So I do want the public to know that um, we as a city council as a whole, not just one, two or three, but as a whole, we've been talking about the crime that is going on in the city of Wilmington. And we have been reaching out and we are looking forward to getting a plan um, so that we can, so it can be executed, and we do hear you, and we talk about this on a um, on a daily basis, um, if not constantly. Um, so, with that being said, you know, I always have a quote: "And every day there are 1,440 minutes. That means we have 1,440 daily opportunities to make a positive impact." That's Brown. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Councilwoman McCoy. 
Um, basically, my my other council colleagues actually stated it best. Um, the, uh, just the past few weeks, I've actually lost uh, two young people within my district. My district is actually uh, used to be quiet for actually for some time, and I, I'm not certain whether or not that was the draw. But um, because of the fact that everybody kind of like shut down and went to bed at a certain time, it also kind of led to people feeling like they could do their deeds in the dark because no one's out there watching. And because of that, I'm starting, I started seeing more loitering and things of that nature. And so I have been working with the WPD trying to make certain that uh, we don't make targets on our corners. I don't, I'm like, I don't, it's, it was never my job to see who's doing what. I don't want to see anyone get hurt. So just trying to move the things that way, but we're still seeing it. And they're so young. I just lost a 19 year old on Sunday. And so, um, with that being stated, you know, whatever the plan was, um, I think it needs to be amended. It needs to be adjusted. I think that, uh, you know, we've actually reached out on more than, you know, on more than once about how we can actually help WPD start making some changes because we didn't see things working. So I just hope that this plea actually reaches their ears and they start wanting to work with us because I feel like it's a us and them. And we're actually working for the city and we're working for the residents here. And we need to be working together to try to solve this. So that's basically I had for this evening. All right. Thank you. Councilman Johnson. Uh, I, I don't want to belabor the point um, about, I think, the statements that have been made about um, gun violence, um, as, as it is very unacceptable, um, any loss of life. Um, and I echo the sentiments of my colleagues that we have been hard at work on a plan. And that's just something that the public does not see right now. Um, but even starting next week, you're going to see some things come together that have never been done before. So I just want uh, everyone to sit tight um, that we are working diligently on a plan. But it's gonna, it takes a lot of effort. It's gonna take community buy-in. It's gonna take everyone to, to, to um, come out on the other side. Um, and uh, um, we have an upcoming finance and economic development uh, meeting this upcoming Tuesday, um, December 7th, and uh, it will be at 5 p.m. And it's a pretty lengthy agenda. And one item is actually a framework for the use of uh, ARPA funds. Um, and we'll, you'll, you'll get a more announcements as the week comes, um, but there is a plan about how to reinvest in the community, especially in community-led um, uh, anti-violence strategies. So we hear the public and, and we are at work on this, okay? So um, next week, again, where more will happen. Please tune in to Finance and Economic Development meeting um, just about some of the plans we're going to be implementing, um, but but we are uh, working to make change in our city. Um, on just switching gears on another note, um, we do have the uh, on the west side. We still have the corridor improvement um, application um, program. Uh, deadline is fastly approaching, uh, coming up at the end of the month. So please get your application in if you're a small business on the west side or looking to come to the west side. Please, please, please. Um, whether it's the 5th District, the 6th District, or the 7th, please apply. There's money out there. Uh, more money is being infused from um, both public and private um, groups where we're trying to um, keep our minority and small businesses afloat, especially during these hard times. As we have a new variant out there, we have uh, possible closures. There's still uncertainty. So we're here to make sure our small and minority businesses are strengthened. So please apply by the end of the month. Um, there's the uh, West Side Grows, um, has the information on their website. You can apply similar to the first two rounds of, of small, um, of, of the corridor grant money. The money is there. So please, again, apply. Um, and, and lastly, going out to our small business community, um, we unfortunately had a, a fire at Crimson Moon on Union Street, uh, which has been a longstanding monument uh, supporting our LGBTQ plus community. Um, it was electrical fire, but they are um, looking to rebuild, and they have a currently a GoFundMe. Um, so please go to their website, and there's ways to contribute to them as well. As um, you know, we look forward to having that pillar in the community back. Uh, so, and um, everyone, again, just please stay safe out there. Continue to stay masked up. Get your booster; um, it's out there and available. And for those over the age of eight, please get your uh, vaccine. Thank you.
Thank you. Councilman Field. Yes, I, I just want to I want to thank a couple of people that were very helpful on a specific issue that improves the quality of life for seniors in my district. Basically at Luther Towers 2, there was a mailbox that had been moved a couple of years ago to maybe 150 feet away from the front door, which is a big deal for seniors that may be in wheelchairs or walkers and have limited mobility because they had had to walk all the way to the corner. And they came to me and brought this to my attention and, and I got in touch with two individuals, Robert Wilkerson of the Postal Service Union and Dennis Kreese, the station manager of, of, on Lancaster Avenue. And with incredible speed, we were able to, they were able to move the box to the front door. And it's, it's a small thing. It's not something for that, that, you know, it's not the biggest issue in the world, but it, it's something very tangible and improves the quality of life for those residents and it's a hundred percent due to their willingness to be flexible and, and creative in, in getting it done so i want i want to thank those two individuals and, and and that's all i have tonight mr president okay thank you councilwoman Cabrera. yes mr president it's that time of year when temperatures drop and expenses go up as some look to celebrate the holidays many are looking to just survive. So I encourage our communities, those that can, to please be generous, um, donate uh, to the different drives that are taking place, churches throughout the community. Uh, there's clothing drives, toys, and food drives throughout um, different places. So I hope that folks can encourage, even if it's just one thing, um, to be able to help another person out and keep those in mind um, and not just now during the holidays but even thereafter as the temperatures um, drop it does become a hard time for many also be observant of your surroundings you know we speak of the holidays stay safe it's that time of year where desperation calls for people to behave in desperate ways um, so lock your car doors lock your home try to prevent theft and uh, just prevent crime through environmental design by just looking around um, and be observant when you're walking. Too many of us get engrossed in our phones, and you know this happens a lot. People will just come and hit you up and take your stuff. So um, keep that in mind. Safety first. Likewise, uh, space heaters. You know, folks are struggling to keep their homes warm. Um, and Christmas lights. They're very beautiful and festive, but if you don't use these things carefully, um, I've seen some of the worst fires that you know have happened during this time of year, um, and it's a really sad time to lose people, especially during the holidays. So speaking of fires and those who put out fires, um, the 100th year celebration came to a close with a banquet with our firefighters on Tuesday. Uh, it was very impressive to see the people that came out and those who have served. So we want to thank those that have served and continue to serve. And last but not least, um, the speakers this evening, Mr. Earl, thank you for always having kind words and advice. Um, you are definitely a familiar face and a welcome face in city council. To the young men, Kobe and Brandon, as you forge on as our future leaders and current leaders uh, you brought some excellent points to the table and a discussion that has to go beyond um, policing and enforcement we do have to invest in our youth we do have to focus on prevention and intervention education and opportunities we have to look at this with a holistic approach um, it is about community being engaged in public safety and he's made an excellent point, you know, the police and, and those people who enforce the law, they come after the incident happens. So it's really about us preventing it, but it can't just be the people who live scared in their neighborhoods. It's a greater picture. It has to be a holistic picture. We need to invest in the necessary tools, not just more jails or guns. That money does have to be redirected to bring these opportunities about. It's, it's a, it's a long-term solution but when do we start if not now i mean it's not going to get any better uh, so i do share in the sentiments and the comments that were made here this evening and again just want to thank those that are out there getting involved and kobe and brandon thank you for your leadership as well that's it mr president thank you councilman spadola nothing tonight council president thank you and councilwoman dixon
Thank you, Mr. President. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to actually relinquish a minute to um, Councilwoman Oliver. Councilman Oliver. Thank you, um, Councilman Dixon. First, um, I forgot to thank everybody who was involved with Ordinance 2148. Uh, um, I failed to mention we do have some individuals who have called who are very interested in them positions. Uh, and lastly, um, I would um, just like to mention I thought it was uh, very upsetting talking about shooting that uh, Jacqueline event um the wife of a music legend killed and shot in la and people if people don't know who he is um her husband um you need to look him up they had a movie he's, uh, the movie's called the black godfather he's done a lot for uh, minorities throughout the united states so talk about a tragedy or a family has done so much for um not just um minorities but just all over the world and just to hear of that shooting, it really just ran through me this morning just to say the gun rapid is just high. I mean, I just, it, just, it, would just, it just made me cry this morning. So that's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you, Dixon. Thank you. Councilwoman Dixon. Um, I'm not going to echo a lot of the comments that have already been asserted, but I also um, knew the young man who was killed on Sunday um, in uh, the 6th District. Um, so it's definitely a, uh, a issue of um, going beyond the public safety components um, in which to, to make sure our kids have everything they need um, and that they are definitely screaming out for help. So um, we definitely have to do our jobs um, as adults um, to make it a better place for them to live in. So that will be my comments for this evening. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. Councilwoman um, Brigitte Fields, want to say a few more things? Yes, thank you, Council President. Um, I also wanted to let everyone know on um, December the 25th, which is Christmas Day, we will, uh, at William Hicks Anderson Community Center, we will be hosting the Mercedes Fields First Annual Community Christmas Breakfast. Um, it will be a grab and go. Um, so we're looking for volunteers, and we're also um, looking for donations. And the time will be from 9 until the food is gone. Thank you. All right, thank you. I just want to uh, first just thank Councilwoman Gray for that excellent uh, committee meeting yesterday for uh, intergovernmental. Uh, there were some really um, um, strong and relevant and much-needed topics that were discussed. And I believe that that spawned uh, right here from public comment. So I also want to thank that uh, Councilwoman Gray did thank uh, D. Marquis for him being so active and making sure that uh, our community is uh, is well served. And I think that, and hopefully that that same energy will continue um, from tonight's public uh, comments from Brandon and from from Kobe. Um, you know, a lot of my colleagues already already did kind of touch on it. I, I do think it's it's um, it's so much bigger than public safety. Uh, I, be, I really believe that we need to look at and change our education system to make sure that we are educating and making sure that our, our children have enough resources and our teachers and our schools have enough resources to properly educate our children and their families. I believe that we need to redirect funding on the city level uh, because what I talked about before was on the state level. To, uh, to different organizations who really can change the mentality of some of our youth. The police can't do that. The police do play a very important role uh, in violence and combating gun violence, um, but they cannot change someone's mind. But I do believe that there are organizations who can um, start to redirect a, 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 a young man or young woman's start patterns as far as conflict resolution. Um, you know, Councilman Johnson brought up about the, uh, the AR um, PA funds. Um, so we need to make sure that we are uh, make, making sure that the, our administration is directing that money towards organizations and nonprofits that will address uh, what, what, what happened tonight at, at our public comment. Uh, so many people in our community want to see what we're going to do. And I think we have an excellent opportunity with those millions of dollars from federal funds to really um, put our money where our mouths are. 
I don't, I don't think that opportunity can be missed. I'm just looking forward to working with the administration to provide that kind of funding to those different organizations that can really start to affect and decrease our gun violence here in the city. Uh, I think our chief of staff um, put it very clearly that on no place in our city is um, violence or gun free. There was a shooting yesterday in, in the 8th district where shots were fired. Um, so there are districts that have much more violence than others, but our, our entire city needs to um, have focus on how we uh, start to, uh, I think, just almost like redirect our, our children and, our, and their families' thought patterns around violence. A city council has an, an, a, um, a very important role in this, but I think that we have to make sure that it, it is happening on a, a grassroots level. And I, only, I think the only way that we can really do that is, is by providing the kind of funding that they need to make a dent um, in, our, in, our, in the violence in the city. Um, again, I want to thank uh, Deacon Errol Tate. I think one of our one of my colleagues thanked him earlier. He's probably been the longest um, standing um, public comment speaker since I've been on council. So I just want to thank you and encourage you to keep coming, Deacon Errol. So we you are really you are really appreciated, and what you are saying and what you are doing matters. Um, I believe that you laid the groundwork for people like Kobe and Brandon because you have been talking about this forever. And now you see what the seed that you have planted, they are they have come to fruition in young men like Brandon and um, and Kobe. So please keep coming and, and please start to bring more people with you. I do believe that those of us on city council, if we really want to see any change in our police department or in city government, we have to um, take a stand and we can't keep expecting departments to act differently if we keep doing the same thing. Um, so we can, you know, we can talk about that, what that means as a council, but I really think that we have to start to make demands and stand by those demands. And unless we do, I just don't think things will change on the city level. Um, it's nice to talk about it and, and, and it's you know, wishful thinking, but I just, I don't think that there is a, a, a sense of urgency felt by some of our different departments as it is here on city council. And I think the only way that's gonna happen is if we become a little bit, um, more radical and just make demands and stand by those demands as one council. Um, so again, I want to thank everyone who has joined us this evening uh, in chambers and virtually. Please continue to be engaged. Uh, your, your input is, is definitely needed and appreciated. Uh, we, we are going to have an, another meeting next Thursday uh, because we are adjusting for the holiday schedule. So our next council meeting will be next Thursday at 630. And with that, I will accept a motion to adjourn. Second. So move. So move. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Motion carried. Thank you for coming, everyone. Have a good night. Good night.